owning a home. It's a dream shared by many, a symbol of security, stability and achievement. But for many, especially young people and those on lower incomes, this dream can feel increasingly out of reach. Sky-high property prices and stagnant wages have created a chasm between aspiration and reality. Governments are exploring alternative pathways to home ownership, with shared ownership schemes emerging as a prominent contender. Shared ownership involves purchasing a percentage of a property while paying rent on the remaining portion. This model lowers the barrier to entry for aspiring homeowners. On the surface, it sounds like a win-win. However, the devil is in the detail. The UK offers a cautionary tale. This essay delves into the UK's experience with shared ownership, examining both its promises and its pitfalls. The UK's foray into shared ownership began in the 1980s, born out of a desire to expand home ownership opportunities for those priced out of the open market. Under this scheme, individuals or families purchase a share of a property, typically between 25% and 75%, from a housing association or other approved provider. They then pay a below market rent on the remaining portion, making home ownership seemingly more attainable. The idea was that as their financial situation improved, they could gradually staircase their way up buying additional shares until they owned 100% of the property. This flexibility, coupled with the lower initial outlay, made shared ownership an attractive proposition for many. Over the years, the scheme has evolved and expanded with different variations and eligibility criteria emerging across the UK. However, the fundamental principle remains the same to provide an alternative route to home ownership for those who might otherwise struggle to afford it. While the scheme's intentions were noble, the reality has proven more complex. Paul Afsher, a young professional in London, thought shared ownership was the perfect solution to the city's housing market. He purchased a 40% share in a newly built flat, excited to have a place to call his own. But his excitement soon turned to frustration with unexpected fees. Service charges, ground rent and permission fees added up quickly. These costs strained his finances, eroding the affordability of shared ownership. Paul's experience is not unique. Many shared owners face a complex web of charges with limited transparency. For Wendy Monaghan, a single mother of two, shared ownership was meant to provide a secure and stable home for her family. However, her experience turned into a financial and emotional roller coaster when she encountered major repair issues with her property. When the roof started leaking, I thought it would be a straightforward process to get it fixed, Wendy recounts. But because I was only a shared owner, I had to navigate a complex web of responsibilities between myself and the housing association. This back and forth led to significant delays, with Wendy and her children living with a damaged roof for months. The repair saga not only caused inconvenience and stress, but also highlighted a critical issue with shared ownership, the division of responsibility for repairs and maintenance. Wendy's story underscores the importance of understanding the full extent of your responsibilities and potential liabilities before entering into a shared ownership agreement. Section 5. A tale of two schemes. Comparing UK and Australian models. Australia, grappling with its own housing affordability crisis, is looking at the UK's shared ownership model with interest. The Australian government has proposed a shared equity scheme, which bears similarities to the UK model as a potential solution to help more Australians enter the property market. Under the proposed Australian scheme, 
eligible home buyers would purchase a property with the government contributing up to 40% of the purchase price. This shared equity would mean lower upfront costs and smaller mortgage repayments, making home ownership more accessible. While both schemes share the goal of promoting home ownership, there are key differences. The Australian model focuses on shared equity with the government, while the UK model primarily involves shared ownership with housing associations. This distinction has implications for the level of government involvement, the types of properties available, and the long-term affordability of these schemes. Section 6. Experts sound the alarm. Lessons from across the pond. The UK's experience with shared ownership has been the subject of much scrutiny, with inquiries, reports and expert opinions highlighting both its merits and its shortcomings. One recurring theme in these analyses is the need for greater transparency and consumer protection within the sector. A 2021 report by the UK Parliament's Housing, Communities and Local Government Committee found that shared ownership is failing too many people and called for significant reforms to the sector. The report highlighted concerns about the complexity of the scheme, the lack of affordability for many buyers, and the difficulties faced by shared owners in staircasing or selling their properties. These concerns are echoed by housing experts and consumer groups who have long advocated for improvements to the shared ownership model. They argue that without significant reforms, the scheme risks perpetuating a cycle of debt and insecurity for vulnerable homeowners. Section 7. Beyond shared ownership. Exploring alternative paths. While shared ownership can play a role in addressing housing affordability, it should not be seen as a panacea. Australia has a valuable opportunity to learn from the UK's experience and explore a broader range of policy options to create a fairer and more accessible housing market. One such alternative is a greater focus on increasing the supply of genuinely affordable housing, such as social housing and build-to-rent schemes. By providing a wider range of housing options, pressure on the private market can be reduced, making home ownership more attainable for those on lower incomes. Another approach is to tackle the issue of demand-side pressures, such as speculative investment and foreign ownership, which can drive up property prices. By implementing measures to curb these pressures, the market can be rebalanced making it more accessible for those seeking to buy their first home. Section 8. A call for caution. Protecting Aussie Dreamers. As Australia considers its own path forward, the UK's experience with shared ownership offers a stark reminder that there are no easy solutions to the complex challenge of housing affordability. While shared ownership can provide a stepping stone for some, it is not without its risks and should be approached with caution. The Australian government has a responsibility to ensure that any shared ownership scheme is designed and implemented in a way that prioritises the needs of home buyers and protects them from potential pitfalls. This includes ensuring clear and transparent information is available providing adequate consumer protection and establishing robust mechanisms for resolving disputes. Shared owners deserve the same rights, protections and opportunities as any other homeowner and the system should be designed to empower, not disadvantage, them. Section 9. Building a brighter future. Affordable housing for all. The dream of home ownership should be within reach for all Australians, regardless of their income or background. By learning from the UK's experience and adopting a cautious and considered approach, Australia can create a shared ownership model that genuinely expands opportunities and paves the way for a brighter future for all. 
This requires a commitment to transparency, affordability and consumer protection, ensuring that shared ownership serves as a stepping stone to greater financial security, not a potential trap. By working together, policymakers, industry stakeholders and communities can build a future where the dream of home ownership is a reality for all Australians, creating a nation where everyone has a place to call home.